Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. You know, it's always wonderful to meet with you. It's absolute pleasure on my part. And maybe you're a brand new viewer, so welcome, welcome. I hope the name of the program kind of speaks to you. Uh, we're interested in the home and keeping the home. And I'm talking about the home, not the house. Uh, the house, too, is good. If you have order in there, it really helps, really, really makes life better. But I think it was Mark Twain who said, uh, it takes a heap of living to make a house a home. And that's what we'd like to help you do, my friend. And so uh, we have wonderful guests on that can just really speak into that great desire of ours. And one today who is a regular, Dr. David Clark. He's a Christian psychologist, uh, majors a lot in um, marriage counseling, also premarital counseling. But today he's going to talk about you know, you and me as a person. And uh, we're going to be looking at his book. He's quite a writer, actually, but his book called um, I'm Not Okay and Neither Are You. And uh, it's a wonderful book to kind of look within yourself. And uh, hopefully you have some real God traits there and, and probably a lot of things you need to work on. So I am so glad that um, Dr. Clark is with us every single month. And I know that you love him, too, because of the feedback we get, and we appreciate that. I'm going to join Stephanie for Raspberry Walnut Bars. Need I say more? Uh, who doesn't love raspberry? Who doesn't love walnuts? And who doesn't love a good buttery crust? That's what we're going to talk about. I'll join Stephanie on that. But before I do, let me remind you, we are viewer supported. That means you wonderful people out there who watch us each day. And I know around the Tampa Bay area, I'm always running into you, and I appreciate so much uh, the feedback, your friendly remarks, your encouragement. And also, we appreciate your financial gifts, and you can make one through the information on the screen. There's an address there, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And also for credit debit cards, 1-800-229-0059. And um, some people wonder why I say that at every program, because one viewer asked me to, uh, that um, sometimes when you can't see real well, you might have vision impairment, uh, you can hear the voice. So that's why we do it. We want to make everybody happy, don't we, Stephanie? We do. Yes, we do. This is, it takes a little effort, doesn't it? It's not quite as easy as some of them we've done. Oh, I done. think it's pretty not easy. Not bad. I mean, it's pretty easy. So yeah. I have a cup of butter softened, and I have a cup of sugar, and I'm just going to cream those together. Mm -hmm. I have two egg yolks that I'm going to put in. I have two cups of flour that I'm going to put in, and a cup of walnuts yes. chopped. And all of that's just going to go in here first. And the, and the okay? raspberry is actually raspberry jam. Yeah, and it's going to go in the center. Okay. Um, I wonder... Why? Oh, it, it, see. It's been sitting here for a while. It's just been sitting in here for a while, so it. <laughs> oh, okay. It's very humid in Florida. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't coming out. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Stephanie has an interesting life, and in very recent, oh in very recent days, she went hunting with her husband and then came home early. And he was still there, and he sends her a letter that somebody dropped this dog off where he is. And could he bring him home? It was a text, yes. He <laughs> said, look what I found. And it was this pitiful hound dog. It was skin and bones. You could see its ribs. Here's mm -hmm. two egg yolks. Mm -hmm. See its ribs. You could see its little hip bones. Mm -hmm. It was covered in ticks. You'd have to really have a hard heart. And I was like, oh, gosh, okay. And, but then it, he still had a few days up there, mm -hmm. my husband. So, of course, he was feeding him all his ham and all of his breakfast Bonded sausage and everything. And then he called me on the day he was leaving. He said, Stephanie, I can't leave this dog here. <laughs> I said, fine, just bring the dog home. So the dog today is not going to be happy because he's getting fixed. <laughs> <laughs> he will never be a father, right? No. Well, we and we have another dog, so... I think you're really a good scout to... That's his name. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. I named him before Dave just, ever brought him home. To just take it, you know? Well, he's he's a precious dog. He's He loves, I mean, he's just... Do you want me to pour some more? He's got, yes, go ahead and pour it on. 
He is pitiful. He's got pitiful eyes and he's droopy ears and he's just so sweet. So how could I say no? You put a picture of him on Facebook that looks like he really feels at home. He was sleeping on the couch last <laughs> night. I think he's comfortable. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the nuts Now, how does, he, um, how does he get along with the other one? Aluna loves to have somebody to play with. Mm -hmm. Loves it. She's been alone for a long time. So. You know, a lot of people have two dogs nowadays, I've mm -hmm. noticed. I've noticed around my own neighborhood. Oh, could you spray that for her? Yes, and could this, you do um, no. uh, <laughs> uh, this, uh, well, what I noticed this morning, I was doing dishes and she was putting this together, that it does take a, a little. So we're gonna do half of this, mm -hmm. okay? And we're gonna just press it down. And then I'm gonna do um, some jam and then the other half of it will go on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so Luna is loving having someone to play with. They play all the time. They play tug of war. They run around the mm -hmm. yard and just jump and have so much fun. So yeah. I think I told you one time that Meredith had a dog named Francois and he was supposed to be Fancy. this thoroughbred. Well, they named him, mm -hmm. um, whoever gave him to her and supposed to be really thoroughbred poodle but he ran around with charlie the other dog mm -hmm. and charlie, charlie was, and francois <laughs> charlie was a mutt <laughs> and francois learned everything from charlie i just so. noticed that i know I, I just have this picture of like this little redneck dog and it's real fancy you got it yeah that's funny and so the, when they both died uh, we had to put charlie on a farm and francois died i told her told meredith no more dogs. We're two women living together. We're busy. We don't have time. Yeah. We went several years without a dog. Uh, so I'm just spreading some. This is um, simply fruit red raspberry. You're ruining my story. I'm sorry, but we're running out of time, yeah. and this is about a recipe. No. <laughs> well, anyway. You go. After several years, she walks in one day with a white Maltese oh. named Madison. How can you say no? You would have had to have been Satan to turn yeah. that dog down. Yeah. How could you say no? So um, we have... Like most families, we have a lot of history with dogs, but I don't have one right now. No. So uh, we haven't finished with this, but uh, we're running a little short on time. So I'm going to just put this other layer mm -hmm. on top. We're going to bake it mm -hmm. at 350, 35 to 40 minutes. I'm just going to press gonna it down. And I'm going to taste it. Yes, Information go. on this recipe is coming up mm -hmm. on your screen, so uh, take a look. Uh, let me tell if it's good. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Welcome back, Dr. Clark. Thank you. I know exactly where we left off. Do you? Last time. We, we, we were talking about this, remember? That's right. I'm not okay. Not, not his newest book, but you could get it on the website. And I really do uh, recommend it for leaderships, especially. should be in your library. But the last time we were talking about that sense of self, and the, your book is I'm Not Okay and Neither Are You, and... and um, there is a healthy sense of self and there's very unhealthy. Right. And I read these last time, I have to, because there's so many, but you came, you came across with these. These are your words. Yes. Okay. Um, you're born with needs and uh, when they're unfulfilled, you become, quote, less than. Uh, you can be depressed, anxious, angry, alcoholic, homosexual, workaholic, shopaholic, gambler, obese, anorexic, perfectionist, full of self-hate, you want power, control, you're jealous, a liar, prideful, lazy, greedy, gossipy, financially irresponsible, complainer, people pleaser, and constantly, uh, you know, shooting yourself in the foot. Shoot, you're constantly undoing your success. Self-sabotage. Yes. I mean, folks like so you came up with that. It's a long list, mm -hmm. yes, but I, I've see, I see people that have those problems every day. Mm -hmm. Not all of them at one time, that's the good news. Oh, <laughs> but that's the good news. You've got one, you've got two, we all have these inborn weaknesses, these tendencies. Mm -hmm. Of course, we all have a, more than a tendency to sin, we, we sin. Mm -hmm. But God, so you have that, but part of sanctification, I'm convinced, is, is with His help, taking difficult steps and becoming more like Christ and then getting into recovery for whatever mm -hmm. your weakness is. Because He said that He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And when one of these many things that I just read controls you, 
you don't have life. You don't. It takes everything from you mm -hmm. if you don't address it. Now, can uh, the emotional problems stem from an experience in um, childhood? It sure can. Very often it does. Some kind of traumatic event or series of traumatic events or how you were raised has everything to do with it. Now, your home might have been fine. I've seen many women, especially, and some men, who their home was godly and wonderful, but the, it was the neighbor boy that abused them. Or, or the teacher, or the priest, or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. And so outside the home, things can happen, and again, they shape you, traumatize you. And as a kid, you don't solve them. You often don't talk about it much, you just kind of survive, and, but it begins to shape your life, and as an adult, you'll have to deal with it. As we make this program, there's a lot in the news about uh, the priests right. who for decades abused uh, mostly young boys, yeah. some girls and all. And that makes it a double whammy when that person, you know, that's kind of perfect in your life. Right. Can you describe, Dr. Phil says it changes who the child is. Yeah. Changes them forever. It does. The good news is with God's help, and I've led some ladies through this, I don't do this kind of work anymore. I'll refer them probably to someone else because in my opinion, and this is not always true, but increasingly a lady needs to see another lady. I think mm -hmm. to do that kind of if there's really been abuse. Now with the guys, I might be able to help. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it just alters your whole view of yourself and of other people and of the world and of God. Yeah, if it's a spiritual context, mm -hmm. even if it's not, if you're in a Christian home, you have to think, God, why would you allow this? And you have to wrestle through that. Mm -hmm. A lot of self-loathing. And then to cope with the pain and trauma and feeling worthless and, and rejected. Uh, you know, and, and of course, as you're a child of a sexual abuse, you become sexualized much well before you should be, and on and on. And so that will lead to some kind of activity that's sinful to cope and, and deal with the trauma. So it's all bad until you start getting into recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'll never forget a program I saw with Oprah when she was still on broadcast. She had a whole audience of men who had been abused. Oh, wow. I, I'll never, ever forget it. And as they got close-ups on those men, you know, we think of the girls. Mm, yeah. The pain in their faces, the sorrow. Yeah. I'd like to take all the abusers and, you know, but... Line you, them up and just shoot them. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, but the, the abusers abuse, right? Right. And very often they had abuse in their past. Right. All right. So it's just this never-ending cycle. Yeah, and for men, a few men I've seen in that situation, oh, it's, it, it's hard for anybody to share, but for a guy, maybe even more so. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I'm going to have to deal with this. Well, it, if you get married, it's going to transfer right into your marriage. You don't want it to, but it's going to. Mm -hmm. And you're never going to be completely open, never going to be able to completely trust that special person. Because my heart's been wounded, I'm not taking the chance with you. Mm -hmm. Well, God doesn't want that. He wants the breakthroughs so you can be healthy here on earth, and it can happen. Yes, and, and what we're talking about is really uh, from this book, and I call it, correct me if I'm wrong, the sense of self. There should be a healthy yeah. sense of who you are. Right. And when somebody comes in and damages that, yeah. it's, it's truly criminal. It is. Mm -hmm. God wants you to see yourself the way He sees you. Mm -hmm. Incredibly valuable, <coughs> with weaknesses, with issues, but ultimately very worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Now, in the book, you say that healing is hard work, and that emotional problems require more than spiritual solutions. Right. That might be a light bulb for a lot of people. Boy, I hope so. I think if I were just a little more spiritual. Right. Mm. That's a trap that many well-meaning pastors fall into, and, and even Christian people, and even some Christian authors, that God, they confuse. God has all power. He can do anything He wants, but He uses the process of healing. Mm -hmm. And faith is important to the process, but it won't get you, like, fixed right now. It mm -hmm. takes weeks, months. Forgiveness, for example, people think you can forgive like right now. No, you can't. You can choose to begin a process for forgiveness, mm -hmm. but depending on the level of severity of the, of the offense, it's going to take you months to get it done. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had some big forgiveness stuff <laughs> in my yeah. life. You have. <laughs> but you've got, you've got to do it if you, want, if you want to be healthy. And you know, um, and you're right, you make a decision and you kind of draw a line in the sand, but Satan will bring it back. And I remember one day talking to Satan, I said, I took care of that. Yeah. You know, get out of here, oh, you God. dirt bag. Yeah. Yeah, he drags it back up. Um, because it's the, it's the only way you can be free, and everybody needs forgiveness, and everybody needs to be forgiven. We've all hurt other people. 
Right. The Bible's clear on that. It's just getting there. Like one quick, I read this one book or I heard about it on a radio show and the guy was well-meaning, but he says, you just, you just, it's just simply a choice. You choose to forgive. Well, that's not true. You have mm -hmm. work to do. You got to relive the crime. You have to do all the emotional work. And then God works through that process so you can truly forgive and release. Well, it takes time. Mm -hmm. It's really kind of a, a linchpin, isn't it, to be whole? Yeah, and, and, and some people have enormous things to forgive. Yeah, they do. But God doesn't qualify them. He doesn't. He doesn't say, this is so bad, you don't have to. Right. With his power, you can, you're going to be able to do it. These people that hang on to the bitterness, the resentment, mm -hmm. the anger, it eats them alive. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you got to work through that and release. It doesn't mean you're going to have a relationship with mm -hmm. the person that harmed you, of course. Mm -hmm. But it means you're, you've released it and, you've, and you can see how God has used it in your life. That takes time. Mm -hmm. I remember I struggled with a couple things that where I had been wronged. There wasn't any question about that. And I told the Lord that. Yeah. And he said, oh, I know that. But I look at your heart. Yeah. And you know, he gave me a deadline. Really? Yes. Hey, really? I was driving my car. He All said, right. you take care of it today or you're taking steps away from me. Oh, man, alive. Whoa. That scared me. <laughs> yeah. I walked right into my office at Central Christian Church. I was minister of music there. And I picked up the phone. And I, boy, it was hard. I, I asked two people who had so wronged me to forgive the things in my heart. And... I'd like to say that the angels came in and we danced around the <laughs> office and sang victory in Jesus, but we didn't do that. No. Uh, no, I cried until I had to go home. Yeah. However, you know what that taught me? To live <laughs> where you just forgive on the spot. You just, just get it over don't with. think about it. <laughs> okay, I'm wrong. I, you know, I need your forgiveness. Just keep yeah. the slate clean. Yeah, the, hang yeah, the hanging on. People I see, they've got, I, I, I call it a past pain list. They have people that have wronged and hurt them, and they've never forgiven. They may have made some attempts, but we, yeah, we have to face that. I have them write letters. We talk it out, and so we get the job done. But you don't want to harbor it. It will destroy you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember getting a, pr a letter from a viewer years ago when I was doing Solo Act program, and she was in a nursing home, and every other line in that letter was, he wronged me 30 years ago. He oh, wronged oh me 30 boy. years ago. And I couldn't help but wonder if that was the reason she was in the nursing home. Yeah, I'll bet. You it know? probably had to stroke. Because it, it does affect you physically, right? Oh, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. We all have physical weaknesses, too. You have a heart history of heart problems, that's where it will go. Mm -hmm. Kidney, whatever it might be, yeah. Um, how do you work with the person who doesn't know how to detect a, a spiritual problem from an emotional problem. There, there could be some co confusion there in people's minds. Well, there could be. We kind of talk it out. And then really in the first interview, I ask spiritual questions. Obviously, do you, are you, do you know God through Jesus? Well, yes or no. If it's no, I'm going to I'm gonna have to. I'm going to want to lead them to Jesus because mm -hmm. we can't do this process without him. Mm -hmm. We might be able to begin, but they've got to come to Jesus. They won't have the power. So when they tell their story, I, I usually figure that out. God reveals it to me. Um, things that they believe, they might believe that they might actually say, if I had enough faith in God and I'm trying, that should solve my problem. Okay, I know that's not correct, so I, I kind of make a note of that. And then I'll gently kind of help them to see that, no, God's going to be powerful in the process, but it's not, this is not a spiritual problem. Mm -hmm. No. But sometimes it is a spiritual problem. Well, it can be. If that's the case, then we do that. Right. I mean, sin. That's I a mean, little easier. It is. <laughs> True. I mean, it's easier to define, maybe. Right. I have people that come in and they're, they're involved in an active affair, they don't want to stop, or they're, they're gambling, you know, one of these things. Okay that, okay, that is a spiritual issue at its core, and we have, to, we have to address it on that level. And then there's some recovery things that would come afterwards. It requires uh, repentance. I it does, yeah. and you've got to stop it. Make things right, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's uh, just to stop at that. That's too easy. We, we, don't we really need to make it just more intricate than that so that it takes a little blame off? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, as if you can stop it. Yes, you can. Now, it might take some time, but you'll do it. Yeah. Okay, we're still talking about the book, uh, I'm Not Okay and Neither Are You. So that's kind of a relief to know. It is. Uh, we're all in the same boat. Yes, and we've got the website up for uh, Dr. Clark. And I like to mention this because I am like 120% in favor of seminars and retreats 
I think there's more things done quickly in those situations than anything else you can do. I used to hold them for women's um, ministries across the country. I saw women leave completely different. And I think every church at some point ought to have a good marriage conference. I agree. And you, you do those. And, I do. Um, boy, I'll bet you could fill a book with just attending a one one weekend it uh, can change a marriage forever. You can, you, and you see it happening. You know it's God. The inconvenience, they have to come, but God brings the right people in and you can, it can lead to real breakthrough. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, his website is on the screen and I would certainly uh, recommend it. And he has a, a good plan. <clears throat> you go in there probably Friday night and Saturday or something like that or Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, right, whatever the church wants. Yeah. And um, Boy, you get married couples in there and a lot of great things can happen. Okay, in this book, you promote something that would be so hard for me, What's an that? accountability That's partner. right. Got to have somebody, same sex, that knows Jesus, loves you, that will hold you accountable in your area of weakness or areas of weakness. Yeah. See, I'm an old preacher's wife and we never trusted anyone. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. And, you, and, and that's the tough part of the, of the, of the leadership. You've got to find somebody It's awfully hard to do. And mm -hmm. it can't be in your church. Mm -hmm. Literally, it has to be somebody outside. Mm -hmm. It could be a family member. It could be a, someone in your role, another mm -hmm. pastor's wife. It could even be long distance. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We've got FaceTime and phones and all that. But you've got to have, I think you have to have that person. I would say I can be trusted. I've got things <laughs> that are going to the grave. Exactly. Oh man, a lot of things that are going to the grave about a lot of people. Right. And um, but I'm not sure I could. I know. Right. Have confidence. That's why it takes time to find that person. You have to vet them very carefully because it has to be in the vault. Everything you tell them, they won't tell their spouse mm -hmm. or anybody else. It's just between the two of us. Very important encouragement, prayer, and as you're working on things, I have people that, yeah, as they're working through the book, they will find, they'll find an accountability partner and that person will help them through the process and mm -hmm. hold their feet to the fire and how, why haven't you done your homework? That helps, mm -hmm. really helps. Well, I hear that from experts like yourself and across the board. Yeah. And, and I know pastors who have a good accountability partner and yeah. I wonder if they realize how rich that is. Oh boy, it's a gold mine. Uh -huh. I got two guys in my life Rocky Glisson, Bob Johns, these are my buddies. You totally trust them, right? I do, absolutely. And they, I could call them at 2 in the morning and they'd come over. Just like, and I would do the same thing for them. It's extraordinary to have two. And we've gone through a lot of things together and prayed and issues in our families. It's been fantastic. It's the way, it's the, way the body of Christ is supposed to work. Right. And I'll have people, if you, if you don't know someone, it is a good idea to go to your pastor and say, look, pastor, here's what I'm looking for. The pastor knows people. He, he can probably hook you mm -hmm. up with someone. And, and you can start the process. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's, it's very, very scriptural that... It is, yes. I, I, I used to preach an awful lot that Christians want to live their life this way. And God's saying, do it. Right. Horizontally. Yeah, Paul didn't go on these missionary journeys by himself. Yeah. He had, he had the men with him. David had Jonathan. It, it is all the way through. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ had the disciples and they had, they had uh, support for each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, wh how important is faith in these things? Because you, you do say that emotional problems do not always have a spiritual solution. Well, right. Well, it's vital. Spiritual is part of the solution only because God, God has to give you the power to work through the process. When I pray, I prayed for a lady today, she's starting this process, in fact, with the book. And she'll read the book and then come back to see me. But I pray that God would help us, you know, work through the process because he's, he, he loves her and he's going to help her. But she, I mean, she'll do the work, but he'll, he'll get it done through her. But her problems are emotionally based. Mm -hmm. uh, trauma, you know, uh, abuse in the past, a, a difficult marriage where she was rejected. I mean, there's issues there that she has to work on. Mm -hmm. But through the steps, Spirit, it will, God will get the job done, and then of course it will enhance her spirituality. So that's the role of faith. And God bless her for seeking help. Right, it's hard. It's a, lo a lot of times, it's uh, help is available. It might not take very long. Right, not at all. I just see people need that the long. spotlight on the right situation. Yeah. I'm not a Freud. I don't see people for years. Mm -hmm. I have a plan. We have God's help. We get right through. Yeah. Do you know we're out of time? We are. Yes. 
But next, next month, we're still going to stick with this. I want you to talk about the cost of pornography. That is huge. At epidemic level. And it's getting worse. It is. With middle school boys can get it on their phones. Oh, yes. It's incredibly accessible it's and perfectly free. Mm -hmm. yeah, awful. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he'll be back next month. You stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Martha Lean would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, you know, the scripture states that, uh, David speaking, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when you dig into that a little bit, it's quite profound. We are made mind, body, and spirit. And it's important that all those function at the same time. And that's the reason a good Christian psychologist can be very, very helpful. The way children are raised, the father, the mother, and the surrounding circumstances can have a profound impact on them for good or for ill. And then, then they grow up, and uh, problems from this very young age can manifest themselves as adults. And that's when you probably should get some help. And I'm thankful for Christian psychologists like Dr. Clark that can, that can help you, and they're, they're, they're going to you know, fit the pieces together. Because the spirit's got to be right. That's what you would really relate to with the Lord. And he talks a lot about the mind and that our thoughts should be fixed on him. And someone who's gone through it all and they've uh, measured, you know, psychology up against the word of God, they can bring up that they can really, really help you. That's one reason when he's on, I try to encourage church leaders that uh, a good marriage counselor like Dr. Clark would be great in their church for a, a seminar. I've learned through my own ministry that sometimes just one session, one word, one paragraph, one subject can change everything for the better. So don't rule it out. And uh, Dr. Clark will be on in another month. Until then, join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.